What's up, pre-calculus students? Mr. Messner, looking at polynomials, looking at their end behavior. Uh, we're doing some matching uh, to start. Which one is the graph of that? We're not using a calculator. It's soft. Uh, we're just using odds and even powers, understanding any x squared or any even power either goes up or ends up down, depending on the leading coefficient. Odds, x cubed, x to the first, x to the fifth, ends up up like that or up like that. Okay? Like, if you think about y equals x cubed, it goes up like this uh, versus uh, negative. You're going down like that. I'm not sure how this video is, is going, but uh, if it's recording, it's whatever, or back, whatever, who cares? So, I mean, the first one's pretty easy because you see a straight line. So 2x plus 3 is a line. Easily see, but you could say odd power, negative leading coefficient. It's like that, or like that. X squared minus 4x, x squared even power, pointing up. This you can tell. Boom, pointing up. Also, uh, we'll be able to see that the larger the power, the more uh, humps you can have. Uh, so if you have like x squared, you can only have one hump, one minimum, versus like x to the fourth. You'd have one, two, three humps, which is one less than the power. It's kind of like turns, we call them. So turns are one less than the total power, uh, even power, odd power. So this is G. Negative 2x squared, opening downward, even power, each. 2x cubed minus 3x. Uh, so x cubed, I guess, or like this, I guess. One or the other. Don't know how this is recording. But that'd be this one. This is like very similar to x cubed, uh, positive uh, values cubed are positive, negative values cubed are positive. So uh, negative values cubed are negative. So this would be f. x to the fourth, but negative. Uh, might have three humps here. Might just have one, depending. x to the fourth. Boom, oh, there's three humps, one, two, three, uh, depending on multiplicities and stuff like that. There's A. Negative X cubed, boom, maybe two humps, or like, I don't know which way, but one of these. This is positive X cubed, there's my negative X cubed, E. X to the fourth, going up. Might have. Couple turns, one, this is like one, two, three. That has a multiplicity of three, we'll see. Uh, so it kind of slows down and goes through there. It's D. X to the fifth, boom, boom, positives. X to the fifth, we should have four turns. One, two, three, four, maybe. Uh, but you can see the end behavior like that. Write the polynomial in standard form. Standard form just means like from biggest degree to smallest. Make sure you keep that negative one, x to the six plus one. Describe the end behavior without using a calculator. Well, it's x to the sixth. Um, I'm not sure how they want you to explain this, whether you could just draw, but uh, I'm going to get you ready for calculus and talking about infinities. X approaches positive infinity would be to the right. And then Y's, our function would approach the Y values of positive or negative infinity. So here, this is negative X to the six, even power going down. So I would say as X approaches positive infinity, I'm going down towards a Y value of negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, I'm also going down towards negative infinity. Uh, find the coordinates of any local extrema using a calculator. So when we get to calculus, we find this using calculus. But for right now, I want you to graph, double check, correct, down and down. And then it looks like we have a max, and it looks like the max is at 0, 1. And that is going to be correct. And if you wanted to double check, second calc, uh, there's a max 
go to the left of the max, go to the right of the max. This is 0 0.001. Remember, your calculator rounds, um, so your calculator is telling you we're pretty much at zero. Don't let the calculator deceive you. All right, this is not in standard form until we move the x to the seventh first. This now is it's x to the seventh, so it's um, you know your your x cubed type graph, like this, like this. Positive x cubed is what I see as this. Negative x cubed would be that. So I guess for you guys, this is positive x cubed. That's negative x cubed. So, anyways, as x goes to the right. It's like this situation, we'd be going down. As x goes to the left, we'd be going up. So x approaches infinity, f of x is going to be going down to negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, we'd be going up to positive. Okay. These are x values, left and right. These are y values, up and down. Okay. Go to the right, down. Go to the left, up. Uh, the only way to have this in standard form is to distribute, unfortunately. So this is negative 6x squared plus 10x to the fifth. Multiply at the powers. Plus this is negative 4x to the sixth. So the standard form would be negative 4x to the 6 plus 10x to the 5th minus 6x squared. Uh, we talk about in calculus, like plugging in very, very large numbers, how the growth of this is just going to dominate anything here. That's why we can just look at the, the biggest term. The biggest term is going to, as we plug in larger and larger values, just dominate uh, what it's being added or subtracted from it doesn't seem like it. It's like, oh, this is like pretty significant, but you'll see like, let me plug in like really, really large numbers. Adding 10 times that no number to the fifth power will be like adding a very, very small decimal to a very, very large number. So you can almost ignore it when we're doing this stuff. And that's what we do, we ignore it when we're doing this stuff. We look at X to the sixth, negative four, end behavior down and down. So as X goes to the right, my y's are going to go down. As x goes to the left, my y's are going to go down. Um, local extrema. I think this is kind of funny. Like, I've done that so many times in my teaching career. Looks like zero, zero is a max. Looks like this points a min, and then I got another max up there. So it's an X to the six. We should see potentially five turns, but because of this zero being uh, a multiplicity of two, we're only going to have three. Anyways, max, go to the left, go to the right. It's going to be zero, zero. Calculator is going to deceive me. E to the negative six, E to the negative 12. E is times 10 to the power. So think about a number, 1.2 times 10 to the negative six. Times 10 to a power, you just move the decimal place over. So 10 to the 6 means move the decimal place over to the uh, right. So it just makes a bigger number. 10 to the negative 6 means move the decimal place over to the left, which means it's going to be a, a decimal. So this would end up being 0 0.000050 126. So then we're very, very close to zero. This calculator is telling us that's zero, or my approximation as a calculator of zero. That, same thing, 11 zeros followed by 961.
So that's essentially your calculator telling you zero, zero is a weakness. Min, go to the left of the min, to the right of the min, press enter. We could find this using calculus and I'm sure it would not be a problem that I actually ask students because it's something that you'd have to use the quadratic formula or can't find actually this would be a fifth power anyways uh 0.714 i'm gonna put dot dot dots 0.733 can't put dots and then let's find this max i don't think i have to see it just make sure i'm to the left of it look at my y's 6.8 my Y's go up, go up, go up, go up. Oh, they started going down. 28, 38, 37. I couldn't stop right here. I wanted to. That's right. Yes. And I get 2.02293. Max there. 40.093. All right. I just double check, negative 6x squared, positive 10x to the fifth, negative 4x to the sixth. Yep. All right, let's standard form this. Uh, 2 divided by 4 is a half, so I got 3 halves x cubed. 3 is canceled, 2 over 4 makes 1 half x squared minus 3 fourths. This is in standard form, cubic, boink. This is positive x cubed. So positive x cubed looks like this. As x goes to the right, my y's are gonna go up. As x goes to the left, my y's are gonna go down. Well, I keep saying f of x, but my bad, g of x. G of X. H of X. <laughs> Just like habit, habit, habit. Let's find these maxes and mins, I guess. I don't use the fraction button because the fraction button's soft. I know my calculator is going to do 3 divided by 2 and then multiply that by x cubed. Uh, I don't have to put parentheses unless I really wanted to. comfortable with my calculator ability to be able to type that in and get the correct graph. Oh, it looks like zero. I flatten out and I would end up being at zero negative three quarters. There's no max or min here. That would be a point of inflection. We talk about points of inflection in calculus, so. No extrema or maxes or mins. Sketch the polynomial function, label the x and y intercepts, factor the polynomial and find its roots. All right, fantastic. So x cubed, positive x cubed, I'm going to end up up here. I'm going to end up down here. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Factor, I can factor out an x. I get x squared plus 5. Uh, I get x is 0. So I get zero multiplicity of one. I turn through zero. Um, it's going to pass through there, and I'll flatten out at a different spot. You can't set this equal to zero because you get x squared equals negative five, and that's an imaginary number. Uh, the y-intercept, 
is when x is zero, right? When x is zero, I'm going to cross through the y-axis. So that's going to be at zero, zero as well. So probably for right now, you're you're just going to draw it like this, but no, it's not a straight line. It will flatten out somewhere. It could like flatten out at um, plus or minus 5i, which means like maybe square root of 5 or something will do with that. It, it kind of, yeah, it looks like a straight line, but it, it, it's not really acting like a straight line. And I don't think its point of inflection is at, uh, its point of inflection is at zero. So it is, it is going to be kind of a turning point there. All right, x intercepts when my y's are zero. Two numbers that multiply to get two and add to get negative three. Negative two, negative one work. So this can factor. There are tricks to factoring when a is not one. Most people don't memorize those tricks, so I try to be okay, and you guys should be okay with guessing and checking. I need to get one. That's nice. So this has got to be positive one. This has to be positive one. Or this has to be one. And to get the negative 3x and to get the positive one, those have to be negative. Like 2x times negative one, negative 2x. Negative one times x, negative one x. Negative three x's. You set both these equations equal to zero, you get one half and one as your solutions. Two x minus one, you add one divided by two. All right, so one half and one. We'll spread things out. It's an x squared, so um, it's got one turning point. Its end behavior is gonna be like up and up. And the y-intercept is when x is zero. Well, then zero, you get one. So zero, one, boom. X squared, X minus four. Find the X intercepts. First of all, you gotta know that this is a cubic. So we're like that, or like that. I think it's like that. It's cubic. So cubics, um, you know the end behavior. Might have two turning points. We're going to find the x-intercepts by setting this equal to zero when my y is equal to zero. I get zero and four. The zero has a multiplicity of two, which means it'll bounce off of zero. Uh, this multiplicity of one means it crosses through. If you have a multiplicity of three, you turn. You guys learned this in algebra two, so this is just review. I don't have to go kind of much into that. Y-intercept is when x is zero. You plug in zero, you get zero times negative four, it's zero. Zero, zero. So I got end behavior like meh, like meh. I got uh, zero, zero, which is the x slash y-intercept, and four, zero. I bounce off of zero, because it's multiplicity is two. I pass through four, maybe something like that. Cool. All right. X to the fourth, up and up, positive leading coefficient. Factor out x squared. And probably three. What's 48 divided by three? 16. So factor out of three, I get negative 16 x squared. Uh, negative 16, just in general, plus x squared after I factor out this x squared. So these are my x-intercepts. This is when the y is 0. I have x is 0. Its multiplicity is 2. 
then x squared plus 16 equals 0, uh, plus negative 16 equals 0. That gives me x equals, x squared equals positive 16. That gives me x equals plus or minus 4, multiplicity of 1 for each of those. Uh, you can rewrite this as 3x squared times x plus 4 times x minus 4, showing that the multiplicities are just 1, the power of those. So I got negative 4, positive 4, 0. My y-intercept is when x is 0, so that's going to be 0, 0. So bounce off is 0, pass through negative 4, pass through 4. Up and up. Pass through, bounce, pass through, there is that. Find the x-intercepts here. Factor out an x. I also factor out a negative x, actually. Factor out a negative x so that I can get a positive x squared, because I know I'm going to have to factor this. So that's x squared minus 4x plus 4. Two numbers that add to get to negative 4 and multiply to get to 4 are negative 2 and negative 2. So this is a situation where you have x minus 2 times x minus 2. That's x minus 2 squared. And that's my simplified g of x. Uh, set that equal to 0 for the x-intercepts, letting me know that x equals 0. We're passing through. It's a multiplicity of 1. x equals 2. It's a multiplicity of is 2. It's going to bounce. So 0, 2, 0, negative x cubed negative x cubed. So I'm going to head up to the left and down to the right. Pass through, bounce. Pass through, bounce. These are easy. Uh, when does this equal 0? x equals 1. Multiple is 1. It's going to pass through x equals negative 4, multiplicity is 1, it's going to pass through. x equals 4, multiplicity is 2, it's going to bounce. x, uh, y-intercept, when x is 0, I get negative 1 times 4 times negative 4 squared. Great. Uh, that's negative 4 times, and this is negative 4 squared like that, positive 16. So 16 times negative negative 64. So we will find that at 1, I'll pass through. At negative 4, I'll pass through. At 4, I will bounce. What type of function is this? This is x. If you, if you thought about distributing everything, x times x times x times x, I'd have four x's. This is an x to the fourth without a leading coefficient, so it's going to end up up and up, up and up, passing through, passing through, bounce. This point here is at negative 64. Now, for some of these, it's easier probably to sketch than to graph and try to figure the same stuff out. But Let's just look at the last two, just for fun. So it's always good to kind of check two, especially when you're just doing homework, you don't have a quiz, like check by graphing. It doesn't take you that long, right? Do I have something that looks like this? Yeah, comes down, bounces off of one, uh, off of two. That's a two. Should probably label that. And then this guy, it's gonna to be tough to see, but we should be able to see it. X minus one, X plus four, X minus four. 
squared. Yeah, goes down through negative four, passes through zero, negative 64, up through one, bounces off of four. Pretty good. All right, what we want to do here is give our polynomial, I think we want to distribute. Uh, given the y-intercept, that's that's an interesting thing. So roots at negative 2 with a multiplicity of 2. That means like x plus 2, you plug in negative 2, you get a 0. Okay, so that's the, a root is a 0. It's an x-intercept. But I have a multiplicity of 2, so I got that. But this y-intercept in 1, that's interesting. I'm going to put a a leading coefficient is a here, and finding a will help me uh, get the correct polynomial uh, so that it has the y-intercept of 0, 1. It's just like an extra point. So when x is 0, y is 1, I get 1 equals a times 0 plus 2 squared, so 1 equals 4a. You divide by 4, you get a is 1 4. So that gives me the function 1 fourth x plus 2 squared. Don't know if they want you, if we want to distribute this. Um, I'll do it for a couple. I won't do it for the last one. Because that's kind of intense. My daughter's calling. Hey, Lola. Hey, Daddy. Hey, how's it going? Can I call you back in a second? I'm just finishing up a video, okay? Yeah. Okay, I'll call you right back. Yeah. All right, call you back. All right. So to distribute this, I have one fourth x plus two times x plus two, x squared plus four x plus four. Now I distribute that one fourth, I get one fourth x squared plus x plus one. Roots are at negative 8 and negative 4, so um, some value, x plus 8 times x plus 4, the multiplicities are just 1, doesn't tell you otherwise. Um, Y-intercepts at 0, negative 3. So when y is negative 3, x is 0. Again, negative 3 equals 32a. a is negative 3 over 32. See, like, I don't want to distribute this. But I'm going to. So let's distribute the x plus 8, x plus 4, x squared. If you factor it enough, guys, you don't need to show every single step. You're better than this. You are now pre-calculus students. You should know that it's like, okay, the two numbers that add to get this, multiply to get this, that factoring, going the opposite way, you add these two numbers to get the middle term. You multiply the two numbers to get the last term. Uh, let's, let's raise our, our mathematical brains here to this. Why, like, I don't do the crosses or anything. It's like, think, think. All right. Twelve. Oh. Twelve doesn't go into thirty-two. Four does. So if I divide by four, this turns into three. This turns into eight. So this is negative nine eighths. Okay. Yeah. Okay, last one. We got a root at negative 3, a root at 0, multiplicity 3. Oh, I am distributing this one. A root at 1. Probably wouldn't write it like this. Probably put the x cubed on the front.
you guys totally have had this before in algebra two. I taught out on level algebra two last year, so I know what you've seen before. You usually didn't have to find this A, but we're finding this A. We get the point zero zero. Good. So uh, A could be anything. Because if I have zero zero, that means A honestly could be anything. Because you get zero equals anything times zero, because I'm putting in zero here. So what do you want the anything to be? I don't, I don't know. Let's leave it as A. Distribute. Don't distribute the x cubed yet. I'll distribute the x plus 3x minus 1. I'm smart. I know that the two numbers are going to add to be positive 2x. I'm going to multiply them to be negative 3. 3 times negative 1. Negative three, three plus negative one, two. That's how we factor. Distribute a x the fifth plus two a x the fourth minus three a x cubed. Uh, what is a? I don't know. A can be a zero zero. I'm not getting any more information. I probably would give you more information or a different point. Be able to find that A value. All right, later.